This month, as part of WBZ's 70th anniversary, we're taking a closer look at the many issues that impact all of us who live, work, and commute in and around Boston. So tonight in Boston Next, I have a look at the winding road that paved the way for today's gridlock and detours. Boston traffic, it's the worst. Well, actually, it's the 14th worst, just ahead of Istanbul. Throw in a crumbling public transportation system and longer commute times, and it all adds up to a major problem in Massachusetts. So how did we get here? Well, the truth is, it's always been kind of a disaster. The more than 200,000 cars which jam into the one square mile of downtown Boston every working day. As detailed in a 1954 WBZ documentary, Boston didn't shy away from massive engineering projects to try to cut down on drive times. This iron work is the first step in the development of the central artery. The central artery was the definitive 1950s highway behemoth, slicing through Boston, separating the north end from the city. At the same time, the Southeast Expressway was built to connect with a third massive highway called the Inner Belt. The T's falling apart, but we're going to spend all this money ripping through neighborhoods. I mean, if you can believe it. Then, State Representative Michael Dukakis, a fervent public transportation supporter, helped kill the idea for the inner belt that would have cut through Roxbury, Cambridge, and Somerville, destroying homes and displacing people. The expressway and central artery became invaluable. And then... This central artery is swiftly becoming gridlocked and threatens to strangle both Boston and the region. So not even 30 years after the central artery, a.k.a. the other green monster, a.k.a. the distress way, went up, they decided to put it underground. If we don't do something about this thing, we'll have traffic backed up to Naponsa for hours and hours every day. And confess that at first I was very skeptical. Then Governor Dukakis still pushed for what would become the most expensive public works project in the country, the Big Dig. $15 billion over 15 years did give the city some beautiful upgrades. The Zakem Bridge and 93 Tunnel opened to southbound traffic today, along with the Rose Kennedy Greenway that's reconnected the city. You can see it's right over my shoulder. This is where you'll be exiting the I-93 South Tunnel. 15 years later, no sign of road construction here anymore. But the Big Dig never delivered on one crucial piece of the transportation puzzle. It was your intention to put a double rail line right down the middle of the thing. I mean, you rip up the city, you might as well connect the two stations after, you know, 100 years of people talking about it. That initial plan to build a new MBTA line linking north and south stations as part of the Big Dig got scrapped. Also, in the 70s and 80s, other MBTA lines disappeared altogether, while the red line expanded to Alewife. <laughs> But today, a record number of people take the team with more than a million rides every day on the nation's oldest subway. Still, the problems with the MBTA are well documented. Aging cars, mismanaged funds, and unbearable delays. How do you get people out of their cars? You give them excellent public transportation, which is on time, frequent, clean, safe, Believe me, they'll write it. Until a plan is put in place, our elected leaders and the everyday commuters have a lot to think about. I think that the state of traffic in Boston and Massachusetts is forcing people to consider alternatives. And those alternatives could be closer than you think. Okay. Coming up tonight at 11, what the future of Boston transportation could look like. You're going to want to see that. And we want to share your stories of dealing with transportation on air and online. Tweet us your story or visit our pay Facebook page. And to see more of our entire Boston Next series, just go to our website, cbsboston.com, and click on Boston Next.